Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Social Watch Services Committee meeting of Tuesday, 31st of January 2017. Lucy, can we have Cedrant and apologies, please? Good morning, everyone. We have 17 members present. We are CORET. And I've so far got apologies from Councillor Ian Crothers, Councillor Karen Crothers, and Councillor Drybra. Thank you, Lucy. Do we have any declarations of interest from members? Councillor Syme? Aye, right, thanks, Chair. Uh, item 12, I'm declaring an interest leaving the room, thanks. Thank you very much. Any other declarations of interest? In that case, we're going to agenda item number three, minute of meeting of 8th of December 2016. Members, is this a true record of the business conducted in that day? Agreed. Thank you. Come to agenda item four. Children, Young People and Lifelong Learning Services Revenue Budget Monitoring Report 2016-17 for the period ended 31st of December 2016. I'm sure all members are now aware <coughs> this budget is part of the SIPL Children, Young People and Lifelong Learning Budget. It's a now a, a combined budget and we have only responsible for a small section of that budget and I would ask that you can find any questions and to, to our particular area of responsibility. Uh, we have Angela Patterson. You want to take us through the report, Angela, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Good morning, members. The report presents the financial position based on the <coughs> figures at the end of December, and the forecast position for SIPL overall is an underspend of 65,000. Within that, the social work element is um, a forecast under overspend at this stage of 60,000 with actions in place to try to improve that position by year end. We're happy to take questions. Thank you, Angela. Any members have any questions on our element of the budget? Ivor? Chair, it's just within the uh, children, family, social care that's projecting 119,000 overspend. Within that, is there a sort of you know, we're allowing for a possibility in there, or is that just based on current spend? Therefore, if something did crop up, we could be looking at a, a greater overspend, or is, do we put in a, I don't know, sort of a safeguard as and say maybe we allow 2% or something just to, just in case? Lillian, do you want to respond? Angela will. Yes, that is the um, forecast position. If nothing else was to change, but within the forecast calculations, there is an allowance for a number of children, for example, <coughs> in residential care. We're currently not seeing that number, but if that was to happen between now and year end, there would be contingency available for that. Thanks, Ivor. Any other members? Jane? Um, yes, it's the, um, the issue about at 3.14, um, that, that saving um, payments for children, families, subsistence and travel. Um, I'm assuming that's from leavers from care, is it? And uh, could I have help with that? Because that seems quite a lot of money, actually. Well, uh, thanks, Councillor Maitland. Yes, it is with regards to the leave and care process. And um, we have put some additional safeguards in, in terms of uh, the responsibility for um, authorising those payments to young people. But we do have some young people who um, have come through the care system that are now at university and we're supporting them through that process. So we are, um, we do have safeguards in place to make sure that budget comes back under control. Thank you, Jane, want to come back? Y yes, I mean, um, I, I absolutely approve of supporting children going to university and everything like that. That's absolutely as it should be. Um, but. It's it's a lot of money. I mean, how many how many youngsters have we got going to university, and how many how many how many journeys do they make for that amount of money? Do you see what I mean? I mean, that is a lot of money, um, given the number of care leavers that we've got, probably who would be using that particular budget. And if you wouldn't mind, I've got another question. Lillian had another question to follow. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I didn't uh, mean that was all used by those children that are at university. It's those through care children uh, generally, and that is a high expenditure for us. Um, we have currently three young people that are in university placements, and two being in Aberdeen, which is particularly expensive. Um, but we also have some young people that we had 
quite significant spend in terms of accommodation, and we've done some um, engagement and significant work with our colleagues um, in housing to make sure that we've got more appropriate and less expensive housing, which will bring that budget back under control. And your last question, Jane. Um, my last question, Chairman, thank you, is um, on page nine. I just wanted an explanation about the criminal justice overspend of 30,000. Lillian. Um, again, the criminal justice budget will um, come in on target. It's currently where we have to, at the beginning of the year, plan for how many uh, community placement, unpaid work placements. So that's the projection for placements, but we're confident that will come in on budget. Thank you, Jane. Any other members? In that case, we'll go to the recommendations. Okay. Members are asked to note, as children and family social work services now part of children and young people and lifelong learning, CIPL, these services will not be reported separately, but presented as part of the CIPL Service Revenue Budget Monitoring Report. Two, two, note that the social work services section of CIPL is projected to be 60k overspent against the 2016-17 agreed budget. Two, three, note the detail of the social work service budget within CIPL services are contained within section 3839. And lastly, consider any recommendations to the CIPL committee on the budget monitoring of the social work functions. And I think that the, the, the inference there is there's now a complete change in the way this budget is dealt with. And maybe as a social work services committee, or maybe the new council when it's formed, which will not be that awfully far away, might want to consider the future of service or how it might be dealt with because it would appear if the CIPL and social work services meeting dates were reversed, we would have absolutely no control over the social work services budget because that would have been agreed a few days ago. So there's a, a, a matter for consideration for all members moving forward. But thank you for endorsing the recommendations and that's food for thought between now and, and those of you that are fortunate enough to come back or for the new members of the committee. We come to uh, agenda item. Oh, Councillor McKee. I'm sorry, Chair, I was a wee bit uh, no a dream, but can I wonder? You're talking about youngsters who've been in care going to university, and that, that's absolutely brilliant. But is there no fund with the Scottish Government? They're always all about achievement and attainment and all this, that, and the next thing. Is there no fund that they can assist councils with for youngsters that go to university? Now, if these youngsters are going to Oxford or Cambridge, it'll cost a lot more. I've not got to argue with you about that. Well, then, we'll not argue about what university they're going to. Lily, and I'll respond to your question. The statutory responsibility for those young people up until the age of 26 remains the local authority. Thanks, Mr. McKee. We come to agenda item number five, the social care fund. This was a report that members requested at the last meeting. Angela has prepared a, a, a breakdown. Uh, I'll ask her just to address the report and then deal with any questions that members might have. Angela? Yes, thank you, Chair. The paper sets out how the £7.6 which was channelled through the IJB partnership, has been allocated during the current year, 1617. There is a small remaining unallocated balance of 126000 um, to provide for any unforeseen contingency matters that arise between now and year end. Members will note that the bulk of the allocation has been in relation to funding the living wage uplift um, <coughs> and care at home and providers in particular. We're happy to take any questions you may have on this. Thank you, Angela. Graham. Thank you, Chair. Not so much a question. I was one of the members who asked for this and the Chair kind of gave me my, heart, my head to play with and my hands um, at the time. But I'm delighted to see it's here and uh, I'm delighted to see that how the money is being spent. I wasn't criticising the, 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 the department at all. I was just wanting to know how the money was spent and gratified to see it's here. Thanks very much for that, Graham. Iva? Chair, it's uh, the last bullet point in 3.4. Uh, demographic increase expected to March 2017, including current overspend. Um, does that cover it? Or could we as a council be asked for a contribution towards a, an overspend that the IGB have in future months. Angela? 
Yes, uh, Councillor Hislop. In theory, yes, we could. But as we stand, as we sit here today, we believe that that is sufficient to cover any what would appear to be the forecast overspend position. We use the term overspend. It's actually growth. It's, so it's the demographic growth that we've seen, the rise in demand that we've seen during the year. <coughs> and the 7.6 million allocation was specifically to cover that as well as the living wage requirement. So it, it is um, proper use of that, of that funding to cover your increase during the year. And we believe that's sufficient so far. Thanks, Ava. Thanks, Angela. Jane? Um, yeah, just, just a, a point on that. I have to say about this demographic um, um, rise, just, just a point to make is that I cannot um, reconcile the information coming through to the area committees about a reduction in the number of people receiving packages and care. Um, I can't reconcile that with this demographic increase um, or the, the increase in need that is is expected. Um, so I think that's just something that needs to be parked and explained to members in the future, please. Um, second question, though, is have I got this right in my mind that this social care fund is actually mainstreamed now? So in other words, we will receive this money um, or the section, the part of it that, that um, we would expect to receive for adult, adult care mainstreamed. Angela? Yes, it does part, form part of the, the settlement for 17-18. And beyond? We don't have information about beyond at this stage, I'm afraid. I think the SNP members are keen to confirm that. Uh, Stephen and then Andrew. Thanks, Chair. Uh, yeah, um, welcome this report. I think the 7.6 million, I think when it was initially uh, brought forward, it was there was existing pressures and there was additionality and new commitments. So I'm just trying to get a clearer sense of what the additionality is, because obviously a lot of it is um, tied into the living wage um, and the renegotiation of that with the providers. But uh, what is actually additionality? Because um, a lot of it seems to be tied into the anticipated demographic growth, for example. So I'm just sort of wondering what's additional and what's pressure that we're using it to, to help alleviate. Angela. Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, Councillor Thompson, the, the term additionality really refers to, to growth. So it, it may be um, suggesting additional services. It actually means managing the, the increased demand that we're seeing. So in that sense, um, the, the two major pressures are the increased demand and the living wage. And together, those have been um, how we've allocated the 7.6. That do, Stephen? <coughs> yeah, so, so the additionality is like the new demands, effectively, but the, the living wage, for example, was like an existing um, issue at the time that we were to use some of the monies for to actually bring things up to living wage, which was as it was at the time. So it's just really that difference between that cost a certain amount of money to do that for the existing demands, and then there's the additional anticipated uh, demographic growth, as it were, or the additional pressures. So it was just to get a kind of a rough figure on that's what we spent on actually addressing the living wage for the existing pressure, and this is the amount that we're spending on the new demands. So it's just, mm -hmm. is it possible to break it down in that <coughs> way, just for my simple mind? Thanks. If you're not able to do it now, Angela, I'm sure a shared uh, email would, would suffice as well, but if you can help Stephen now, that would be useful. Yeah, the the living wage figures. Um, you're right; they did cover. They they are relating to the existing packages that we had in place at the time when the changes were made. The demographic growth now includes the cost of those new packages, taking into account the living wage requirements. So that, that's the difference. The living wage requirement for new packages is is included in the demographic growth. If it's okay, Chair, I'll maybe ask for more detail after the committee. That's fine. Thanks. Thanks for that, Steve. That would be helpful. And if there's some complicated explanations... The, the living wage Angela total figure is the 4.9. So the cost of the living wage is 4.9 million. Right. And if Stephen does need further information, Angela, you, you'll be able to assist him. Andrew? Thank you, Chair. It's in 3.5. <laughs> 
The remaining unallocated balances in the, within social care fund is standing at 126,000 at present. In the event of it not being used, does that get rolled over or what actually happens to it? Angela? Is it calling this time, is it? Um, potentially, once we see it at the year end, we'll review the balances and the potential will carry forward into the new 17-18 uh, year uh, as a one-off basis. Uh, that one too, Thanks, Andrew. Any other member? Graham? Yeah, it's maybe a daft laddie question, but as a, as a child of the 60s and 70s, why are we... Oh. <laughs> it's <It's optimism. laughs> Why are we developing mobile army surgical hospitals? <laughs> oh, right, aye. Yeah. <laughs> Let in. It's a multi-agency safeguarding <laughs> hub for adult services. You've been watching too much, you've been watching too much television, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> if members are content and that we can go to the recommendations, Members are asked to note the detail provided in relation to how the Social Care Fund 2016-17 has been utilised up until the 31st of December 2016. Thank you, members. We come to Agenda Item 6, Joint Inspection of Health and Social Care for Older Adults, the Improvement Plan. This is part of the IJB, I believe, but Lillian and uh, Heather will collectively sort this one out for us. Heather, will you take us through your report, please? Okay, at the last committee, we said we'd bring you through um, a progress report um, at the stage that, that it was at at, the, at this point. Um, the action plan itself, the improvement plan, has just been signed off and is now awaiting sign off by the care inspector as well. So we're still in the final stages of that sort of like, you know, getting it all um, sorted and together. So what I've done in this report is I've pulled out specifically the actions that relate to social work or as close to social work as as possible are the ones that we will be responsible for in order to at least at this stage give you a flavour of the sorts of work that we're doing. Um, the really important bit of context here is that when we were putting the improvement plan together we were very mindful of the stage that the IJB was at in terms of we just put together the strategic plan and the locality plans and therefore in the locality plans there's a lot of the work that's now sort of sitting in the improvement plan as well. Um, and we're really clear that we do not want to duplicate, we don't want to have a whole series of action plans running, because that's not helpful. Um, so some of the, this is about being able to report back to the care inspector to say, against the recommendations that you, you set us, this is the sort of the progress that we're making. But we're really conscious that part of the sort of the development for the leads will be how they gather in the information in terms of the different strands. You note in, in, in the actions here, there are a number of things that there are quite big pieces of work and therefore there'll be various strands to be pulled in that will be pulled in against progress against this as well as progress against um, the locality plans as well. So we've tried to keep it as simple and straightforward um, and that's not necessarily been particularly easy to do but we really want to make sure that there's no duplication. Um, so this is a flavour of what there is. When, once it's fully signed off, you will of course have access to the whole improvement plan and you'll actually see it in its entirety and I think that will sort of make more sense as well. So I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks very much for that explanation Heather. I've got Ian. Uh, thanks Chair. Um, there's an awful lot of adequates in here. When do you expect that um, we're going to see improvement? Heather? Heather. Uh, that's, a, that's a difficult one. Um, there are a number of adequates in there um, and I suppose we would we would look to focus on, on those ones to sort of try and see the improvement. I think the improvement on, will be different um, for different areas. Um, and I think that's where we've gone with a model which has been about a senior lead for each of the themes that we've put in place. And that that therefore would give us a link right, quite clearly to the recommendations and therefore to the quality indicators so that we're able to say actually this is where we're at. So we're currently adequate in that. What is it we need to do in order to move from being adequate up to good? Um, and, and we would expect the more detailed plans there that we're looking at to actually give that some thought. In some areas, that will be easier than others to say, well, if we did this, this, and this, hopefully that would take us up. In others, it would be about a combination of things that will need to happen. But that would be the focus of the, the progress, and certainly the progress that um, Julie White will look for when she pulls together the leads to say, well, you know, we need to then review and scrutinise how you're, you're getting on. In terms of time span, again, that, that's a... That's a really hard one at this early stage to say. 
about when we'd moved, because that will depend as well on, on when we're re-inspected. Um, and we can sort of self-evaluate ourselves, maybe in 12 months or 18 months, and say, do we think we've moved from adequate um, closer to good? Um, and I think we'd probably be keen to, to look at some level of self-evaluation over the next sort of like 18 months, two years, to be able to say, we need to demonstrate, and we need to demonstrate to you as elected members and to other people, to the IJB, that we're making that progress and that therefore if we were inspected again, you would see that moving from adequate to good. Thanks, Ian, and there is a recommendation that we agree for other reports come to this committee in due course. I have Jane. Um, you, yeah, you sort of answered my own question. Um, I suppose I'm um, faintly confused as to, to who's going to own this and how, how we're going to make certain that everybody knows and understands what's happening. So um, I, I, yeah, well, I recognize what you're saying as far as um, it will come to this committee. Uh, I'm not absolutely clear that this committee in its format is going to exist. And um, I, I think, you know, it's incredibly important. I presume the IJB is going to receive this. Um, and we have responsibility with respect to the staff that we employ um, and, and what they are doing about it. So I, I'm afraid I'm not absolutely clear as to how this is all going to fit in and, and people are going to get a real overview about what is happening and what's, what's, um, what's expected of us. I'll just ask Lillian to help you with that one, Jane. Thank you, Councillor Maitland. Um, the responsibility for the full action plan sits with the Integrated Joint Board. The Clinical and Care Governance Committee, which is uh, delegated in terms of the professional service delivery from the IJB, has the professional overview. However, we felt it was important that in terms of the social work progress elements of this action plan that we continue to ensure that elected members were fully kept up to date with the progress. As Heather's quite rightly articulated, there are professional leads for each element of the improvement plan and the reporting will be through the IGB to the care inspectorate. Um, but we felt it important that elected members are fully aware of the progress made. I hope that clarifies. Thank you, Eugenia. Graham. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, in the report, it makes reference to the fact that this inspection was done at an early stage. Um, were other authorities inspected at an early stage? And if not, why were we singled out for treatment? Well, I am. Uh, yeah, Councillor Nicol, um, they were, it was undertaken for other, other local authorities at the very early stages of the IGB, and it was the programme as delivered by the care inspectorate. And um, I think many of us raised the issue that it was perhaps not the most appropriate time. Um, I've got, oh, you're coming back. Could okay. you come back? Yeah, I mean, how long will it be before they come back? Is it is, is, is a routine thing, or is, is there a set time, or is it an ad hoc approach? Um, it's like, sorry, it's likely to be within the next four years if we stay in the, the, the normal cycle. Thank you, Emma. We've got Stephen and then Iva. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, it's been sort of um, uh, touched on a little bit already. Obviously, this report kind of covers the period January to March 2016, which is when effectively this council was last responsible or, or, or accountable, if you like, for the details in the report and the improvement plan, whereas now, as you've been explaining, Lillian, this is really for the IJB uh, to lead on now. Um, so I don't know what the status of this committee will be in the new council. Um, like Councillor Maitland, I'm not sure what its relevance will be, but I, I know that the IJB, for example, it's very, it's, I can't even find the information online sometimes that there's an IJB meeting happening. So it's very hard. I know this is here for noting, it's good for information, Effectively, though, all we can really do is ask for a, a future noting report if indeed there is another committee for this. But the IJB papers, for example, obviously those on social work have an interest in that because it, there's this uh, transitional understanding, if you like, of how it works. Um, but I can't readily access that and it's not in the public council diary. So I'm just sort of, I'm, I'm glad that the chair, the chair's here and his other hat to maybe help me with this. But um, this is the IJB's work now, really, isn't it? And we're just getting kept up to date with our element of it. I think Lillian wants to come back in the first bit, and then I'll try and help you with the rest, Stephen. 
Uh, Councillor Thompson, the inspection was on the partnership, not just the social work adult services, so it was as part of the IJB process, just for clarity. And I think as well, I respect whether or not this committee exists, I would expect there be some information disseminated to some committee within the council to keep them up to date, up to date with the activity that's being conducted on behalf of the IGB by the health board, by the social work services. As far as the council diary is concerned, I was under the impression that they were most definitely contained within the council diary as meeting dates. However, I'll clarify that. And if there's an issue about no being able to access information online, I'll deal with that as well, because clearly the IGB want to be publicly accountable and want to ensure that the public are aware of their existence in the business they conduct. So there are public meetings, they're open to the general public. The unfortunate thing is, much like council committees, members of the public are no entitled to engage in the committee meetings per se, but they're certainly encouraged to attend. So I'll look into that and I'll come back to you personally on that, Stephen. Uh, Lillian wants to come back as well. Can I also confirm, Councillor Thompson, that once the full action plan has been agreed by the Care Inspector, it will be published on the IGB website? Stephen? No, I appreciate that you'll, you, you'll be able to come back to me after looking into it. The reason why I'd mentioned it was because I'd noticed it wasn't on, so I'd flagged it up through the EMES system as it happens. And, uh, and I don't know if it's been added since. But um, I, I do understand that there's another website, I think, dedicated to the IGB papers, uh, which may have the information on, but my normal recourse is to the council website because we're very much involved in this. So it surprised me when it wasn't readily available there. Um, but maybe that's what you can come back to me about. Yeah, and maybe we need to attach a link because clearly it's not a council committee, it's an external body that we members of this committee are party to or part of. But Lillian, excuse me, there is a link. I'll, I'll sort that out with you, Stephen, and, and ensure that you've got access to that. Hey, I've got Ivor and then Jane. Chair, I'm still trying to get used to who's the authority, etc. Are we still the social work authority for this region, or has the adult services passed over and we have nothing to do with it now? Because within Recommendation 7, on page 19, it says there should be controls put in place to avoid potential conflicts between the NHS board, board and the IJB. But if we're still the social work authority, should there not be controls as well to make sure that there's uh, no issues between us and the IJB or the NHS? I'll let Lillian deal with that, you know, Thanks, Councillor Hislop. Um, adult services are delegated to the governance arrangements within the Integrated Joint Board. However, as the Chief Social Work Officer, I have the statutory responsibility for adult service delivery. In terms of Recommendation 7, that was directly linked to the conflict of roles between the independent financial manager for the Integrated Joint Board, who is also the Finance Director for <coughs> NHS Dumfries and Galloway. So the conflict raised by the Care Inspector was around the governance arrangements for reporting the financial process, and that is under an action for governance, which has been delegated to myself under the partnership. So um, the short answer is we don't have the direct operational responsibility, but we do have the statutory responsibility. <coughs> Clarified for the moment. Jane? Clear as mud. Um, <laughs> um, Chairman, um, I thank you for letting me come back in. Um, I, I um, just wondered one of the classic questions i remember sort of years ago being being um, asked uh, about this sort of thing was how many people left hospital without a care plan where do i find that sort of information and who is responsible for that sort of information but i be but uh, lillian will reply certainly that's part of the um development of performance indicators, which will go to area committee. And obviously, I know that you um, were, were at the IGB, uh, Councillor Maitland, so that was discussed, the level of information. Uh, that, that information currently sits with colleagues in the NHS, but um, certainly we could look, Heather could provide that information. I'm not sure it would be an exact forum that you would wish it, but we could certainly see what information is available if 
if that would be helpful. But ultimately, it sits with the IGB. Uh, and if it'll help, one of the discussions at the last, oh, you were there anyway, was about how we present a monitoring reports to the area committees and what other information they might want. And I'm quite sure that will be a moving feast or it will be a, a, a state of flux until we get a, a, a pattern that, that satisfies members of the public and members of the council as well. Hopefully, we'll find that relatively soon, Jane. Uh, Graham. Thanks for letting me back in, Chair. Um, you mentioned in, uh, just a minute or two ago about transparency in IGB, and, and our, but do our partners in IGB have the same uh, appetite for transparency that the Council has? I would certainly hope so. I don't know whether Lillian can endorse that or not, because th there is no, as far as I'm aware, and I, I have no sense that uh, the IGB wish to be secretive uh, whether or no they post all the information online, I have no idea because I don't follow it fastidiously. Uh, but I would imagine if the information were available, the IGB would be willing to share it. It's a question I will ask uh, the Chief Operations Manager, Julie White, and I'll come back to you with information on what type of information is available because there may be, for practical uh, uh, and uh, financial reasons, no, every bit of information you might want will be available, but I would assume the majority it would be. Jane? Just having a wee stretch. <laughs> but no, I'll do that, Graham. I'll come back to you on that. Andrew? Oh, thanks, Chair. That was quick. Uh, it's in the improvement plan number six about to talk about the coherence strategy for the use of community and cottage hospitals. I would have thought that was already in place because how were they able to assess the requirements of the new hospital if there wasn't a plan and how it was all going to interact and work together? Can I get some clarification on just where we are with that? Marlene? Um, I think the feedback from the inspectors was that whilst there was plans in place and strategies in place, they felt that they could have been more succinct and robust. So that is an action uh, that will be taken forward by the integrated general manager. Andrew? Can I ask them, what, what are the timelines? When will we actually know and, or, and have a definitive answer as to just what is happening? I, I can't make any comment in terms of the timescale for NHS um, and the strategy, but it is part of the ongoing um, development of the action plan. I'm happy to to bring that back as part of the ongoing reporting on the improvement plan. Good, Andrew. Okay, if there are no other questions from members, can we go to the recommendations? Members are asked to note the range of actions planned to deliver in the recommendations of the report in respect to those relevant to the social work service. And I agree that further reports be presented to the update committee on the progress of actions relevant to and being actioned by social work. Happy with that? Thanks, members. Okay. We come to agenda item seven, which is a minute of the Increase in Galloway Adult Support and Protection Committee, 8th of September 2016, for noting. Agenda item eight, minute of the Increase in Galloway Child Protection Committee, 31st of October 2016, for noting. Stephen? Yeah, it's just a comment. I, I mean, I think I've made a similar comment in previous ones, but there's um, a... I noticed there wasn't any elected member present present at the at that meeting, and I'm just wondering, do we need to encourage more um, elected member presence just so we're we're you know making our influence felt, as it were? And if there's maybe an opening for other members who, who could attend to attend. Ted wants to come in on that one. Um, the the members of that committee are the chair and vice chair of this committee. Uh, if you look at the notes, you'll see that. Um, I did, in fact, attend the Adult Protection Committee. Um, myself and the chair have agreed that one of us will do one committee and one will do the other. As you will appreciate, you know, we do actually have a relatively heavy workload, and that's why we've come to that arrangement. I hope that answers your query. And I'm sure if you're looking to volunteer, Steve, and folks would be happy to take that as a, an opportunity to allow you to become involved in the Protection Committee. That's very kind, Officer, uh, Officer Chair. But um, I'm just my understanding was that it was the Chair and Vice Chair that 
could do that. And I don't know if you're opening it up to other members. I think that was my point. Um, is it open to other members to attend, or is it just the chair and vice chair that attend the Child Protection Committee? It would be up to this committee to nominate if someone were willing to attend. And, and I, I, I see no difficulty having a second elected member there. Given the, the short time scale before the new council convenes, it would probably have to be approved by the full council in the winning winning capacity for that to be done in the short time scale. But take your point, and it's a, a matter that we'll deal with, or someone will deal with, depending upon who occupies these chairs in, in May. But thanks for that, Stephen. Uh, agenda item nine, any other business deemed urgent by the chairman due to need for a decision? I have no additional business. Agenda item ten, local government Scotland Act 1973. 